بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد اتقوا فراسة المؤمن فإنه ينظر بنور الله بوي of the foresight بوي of the vision of a believer so when a person's iman is strong then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this vision, this far-sightedness, this forethought, this uh, to preempt and to see through situations. And there are many stories narrated amongst Sahaba. So uh, likewise in the Rewait of Tirmizi, in Allah Azza wa Jal, in Lillahi Azza wa Jal Ibadan, Ya'arifun al-Nas that they are some servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are very special that they have been given this insight and this quality of discernment in fi dhalika la ayat lil mutawassimin they are signs for those people who can see so one is the physical eyesight, one is the mental and the spiritual insight and foresight. As uh, Alama uh, Mujahid has mentioned, that those who have insight and discernment, likewise, Qatada has mentioned, those who learn and take lesson, those who ponder. So Allah SWT has given us life, this life is short, we need to really utilize this this time this potential properly for Allah al mutafakkiruna al mu'tabiruna wa yatafakkaruna fiha wa ya'tabirun that i should not allow any situation yes if allah takdir is decreed and it is the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but at least as a believer in another riwayat فَإِنَّهُ يَنْذُرُ بِنُورِ اللَّهِ وَيَنْذِكُ بِتَوْفِيقِ اللَّهِ He not only sees with the vision of Allah, but the words that is uttered by a believer is inspired by Allah رَبُّ الْعَلَمِينَ So we've seen statistics we've done last also. But the solution for humanity is in deen. And Allah explains that if you really want to live life on earth, that's... That's the beauty of deen, that it will bring the best of dunya and the best of akhirah. وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاسِ حَيَاتٌ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ That there is life for you in qisas, legislating the law of qisas, equality. A person who is a murderer needs to be killed. There is benefit in that. A person who is a thief, his hands needs to be cut off, amputated. So this is a way, a system where the sanctity of life will be preserved. Because anybody who sees or witnesses this gruesome scene will himself abstain from killing others as well. So if you kill others, you should be killed. But that lesson will, will be a means of, of preser preserving the entire uh, society. Abu al-Aliya has said that Allah has made this law of equality, Qisas. So how many people because of this command of Allah have been prevented from killing others, from creating fear and, 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 and oppressing humanity? And ulama have explained that Ya ulil al-bab O oh, men of understanding, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you may acquire taqwa. That these people who understand, comprehend, ponder, they will realize what power Allah has kept in His awamir and commands. And if a person has taqwa, then they will not perpetrate like that. وَالسَّارِقُ وَالسَّارِقَةُ فَقْطَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا that for the, the, the men, the women who steal, the hands should be cut off as a punishment for what they've earned. So this shows the necessity of this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person sees this, 
then immediately he will not want to steal. So the ulama have got uh, uh, in, in, in the riwayat uh, of, of, of the amount لَعَنَ اللَّهُ السَّارِكُ يَسْرِكُ الْبَيْضَ فَتُقْطَعُ يَدَهُ Even if a person steals an egg, as a result his hand should be cut off. وَيَسْرِكُ الْحَبْلِ فَتُقْطَعُ يَدَهُ Even if he steals a rope, his hand should be cut off. The Rewaid of Bukhari تُقْطَعُ يَدُ السَّارِكْ فِي رُبْعِ دِينَارِ فَصَعِدًا Even a quarter amount of dinar means a very insignificant amount, yet his hand should be cut off. So let me explain that how can you quantify, you say in dunya is worthless, how could you quantify a hand, a, a person of Iman, his hand be cut off for this meager amount. So uh, they say that since this hand has broke the command of Allah, it loses value in the eyes of Allah. It is valueless now. So, dunya which is valueless and its significant amount, that still too, a person will suffer the consequences of his crime. So, we have to understand, and these ayat are highlighting the intelligent people, the people of Iman and their sifat. So we have to realize that a person who is a thief doesn't care about you, doesn't care about your family, he doesn't even care about himself. Why? Because he's ready to die, he's ready to he's risk his life, he's ready to go into prison and uh, he will, you can jeopardize yourself, your family, uh, your possessions, everything. And uh, it's important we understand the mindset of a thief. So they've got a mindset or mindset of evolving, of, 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 of progressing, and you are the host, you are the victim. So every second of your day, you are the victim. Like we understand for Akhirat, nafs and shaitan are at it all the time, we are victims. Now how can we be one up? How can we be ready? How can we be prepared so we don't get caught in these traps? This understanding how the thieves don't really consider crime or about the sentence, they say there were two teen teenagers, youngsters, they were mugging an, an old elderly lady, police arrested them, taken to the station. So the constable that was there told them that uh, you allowed one phone call. So after about uh, 20 minutes, somebody entered the station. So uh, they contacted the, the, the sergeant, the, the colonel and, and informed him that uh, somebody is here for the boys. So he told uh, the youngsters, I assume your kids uh, have called your lawyer. The person downstairs is your lawyer. But they replied, no, we hungry. That's the pizza delivery boy. That's the pizza delivery company. So they committed a crime, but they still bold enough. They still uh, really have a don't care attitude. So we have to understand the mindset of, 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 of what's going to happen. Likewise, the coming of Dajjal, the end of the world, whether it's a World War Three, whether it's the appearance of Dajjal, uh, we, 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 sh we should be prepared, we should be ready and, 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 and uh, amal-wise, spiritually-wise, Zahiri externally as well. So uh, we shouldn't get fooled without planning. They said there was a man that uh, Somebody jumped him, some thieves jumped him in an alley, some muggers. So he put on a strong resistance, he showed uh, his, his muscle, but eventually, obviously, there were two of them, one of a normal civilian. He was overpowered by the attackers and they went through his pockets. And by the time they finished searching him, they found 48 cents. So the mugger was shot. And he said with uh, bewilderment that, uh, is this uh, all you wanted, said the man, relieved that it was 48 cents, okay, it's over now. Is this all that you wanted? I thought you were after the $500 in my socks. I thought so, you were after the $500 in my socks. So sometimes we are so foolish, we might laugh about this person that is so foolish. But the fact that we are so lax and calm about things that uh, 
we, we, we don't really realize where we're going to, which direction we are going to. We do not have any focus. So a believer uh, prepares. So looking at the statistics as well, people that are staying uh, in South Africa, there are 243 correctional centers with around inmate population of 106 uh, 1,000 uh, population of uh, prisoners in the prisons in South Africa. So uh, that will tell us that uh, what's, what we go through statistics uh, and understand that what is the mindset of people and, 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 and where we, we are prone in, 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 in possible compromise situations. If we look at the US, then we're looking at around 2.3 million people were incarcerated in the US. So these figures are phenomenal. And uh, a person just hearing these numbers here, so if we look at it, the US population is around 330 million, but 2.3 million people 698 people per 100,000. So, uh, in, in, in just looking at the, the, the US population and incarceration, 25% of the world's prisoners are in the US. So, if you thought so you were at risk in your country and you were a crime city and crime capital, then look at the US. 25% of the world's prisoners are in those prisons. So, uh, 2016 statistics, around 7 million people are under some type of uh, correctional, uh, whether it's incarceration, whether it was probation, whether it was parole, 3.6 million on probation, 840,000 on parole. Um, in 2016, 1.2 million violent crimes were committed in the U.S., and uh, 10.7 million arrests. This is actually in your traffic violations, which is also an arrest. Uh, but 10.7 million arrests. Look at the population, 330. So almost 3% of the population were arrested. And a serious amount of, amount of money, $212 billion dollars from the judicial, the police, correctional services was spent. And uh, just alone in correctional services, $74 billion. So we have to really understand that, uh, look at the amount of jails in the US, 1,833 state prisons, 110 federal prisons, 1,772 juvenile correction facilities, 3,134 local jails, 218 immigration detention facilities. So uh, that's the U.S. Let's go back to South Africa. So the SAPs are responsible for 1,123 police stations, and they had around 187,000 service members. Now, comparatively, private security, 450,000 private security guards, that's 2020 stats, and uh, 1.5 million qualified private security personnel, but inactive. Now, we're going through statistics because a person, we, we, we need to, like Nabi Ali Salatu Salam warned us about the coming of Dajjal, the signs of that as well. And a believer takes less than every moment, but uh, these statistics should be an eye open. It, 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 need, it needs to, to, to move us and motivate us to do something. So the number one crime in South Africa is house breaking. And uh, that's the most common crime experience. So the number of households uh, in a five year period in South Africa was 2.1 million. In 2015 to 2020, 2.3 million. So crime is increasing all the time. Crime is increasing. So around 1.2 million incidences of house breaking. 18, uh, 891,000 households have been affected. That's around 5% of the 
of the total country households in a country south africa five percent means there's a five percent chance every day a person will uh, uh, be prone and a target to this crime so if we were to quantify that figure then 2657 per day 110 every hour two every minute so people whether it's electronics laptops decoders cameras jewelry etc but information is important so the people uh, and we have to understand that there's a difference one is home robbery which is a violent crime where because uh, compared to house breaking house breaking is called burglary home robbery what's the difference a burglary happens when <clears throat> nobody is at home home robbery is when you are at home so in south africa 169000 incidents of home robbery occurred and that affected 139000 homes so almost one percent of the population this is violent crime your, your your life your family your possessions everything is at risk so what what as bob what means uh, uh, do we wait for something to happen do we wait for things to go wrong then we're going to do something about it what about theft of personal prof property south africa alone 2.2 percent of the population then motor vehicles 88,000 incidents of theft of motor vehicles 2020 that's half the population of South Africa so uh, now hijacking of motor vehicles I mean even insurance companies they say the Volkswagen city golfs some insurance companies don't insure them not the Masla is separately but it's for statistics we're not getting into the Masla they they don't even insure it so what preparation they making so 50 cars stolen every day 50 cars stolen every day around 8.5 billion rand worth were stolen vehicles annually in south africa where they from the dealerships the showroom floors storage facilities etc um, they move it to neighboring countries they've got facilities where they chop shops then look at murder so every day 57 plus minus people are murdered every day in south africa so more people are likely to be murdered than die in a car crash that's in south africa so uh what are we doing about it street robbery uh the more uh, another common crime in south africa and uh you're looking at around 697,000. Uh, that was five years ago to 1.1 million currently now increase all the time and uh, what metropolitan areas are greater target so if you're living in the metropolitan area and you're walking on the street you are at risk la ilaha illallah what was the weapon of choice knives that's uh, 48 percent 35 percent use guns so you are likely to be robbed mugged by a person with a gun or a knife 3013 incidents per day 125 robberies every hour two people every minute are getting robbed what about assault 497000 common use knives again and that also half the people report it consumer fraud 384000 fraud 1.4 million incidences of fraud and farm murders these stats are important people say okay we're going to go to the farm we're going to live there but uh, what about we you know you're not uh, safety savvy you're not security savvy oh you don't just spend the money so you're putting your life your family at risk from 1994 uh, to 2020 13,000 farm attacks 2,000 were commercial farmers were killed besides those that were injured wounded etc and uh, so a resident of a farm has a, a, a four times la ilaha, greater chance to be murdered than a, a non-farmer, an average South African civilian. So again, caution, preparation. What about kidnapping? Kidnapping is common with around 4,100 kidnappings. In 2013, to now, uh, it's, it's, it's gone to uh, 6,632. 
that's 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 a great increase so daily it's increasing every day there's around nine kidnappings in south africa so if we're really serious we'll realize the gravity of the situation it's myself it's my family it's can you afford the trauma for the time can they afford the trauma can they afford the psychological scar that will 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 uh, haunt them f not for one year two years we don't know how long we don't know what's the consequences what what preparation are we making is there was a farmer who lived in a village and he had a small farm outside so it was a bird that made a nest it laid two eggs they hatch and they were living a life comfortably then one day the mother went in search for food the children heard the farmer saying uh, i will ask my neighbor tomorrow to come and start harvesting the crops so the children got very they told the mother that uh, today is our last day here we must move to another place at night the mother said no don't not so soon i think so we got time and she got carried in his normal next evening he came he seen he was upset he said you know what uh my neighbor is like this and this he muttered to himself with frustration and he said that i'll ask my family member again the children got worried told the mother farmer said this said, don't worry uh, nothing will happen then when uh, the next day happened same story farmer came upset he said you know what i can't rely on anybody i'm going to do it myself tomorrow and the mother came they told the mother she said hey you know what we will leave this farm tonight and go to another place so they were shocked they said mother what's the story first two times you weren't worried she said no he was dependent on others but this time he decided to do him himself so tomorrow definitely he will come so we rely on our safety our security and everything on everybody else and then we blame the police yes it is a responsibility we blame the security company we blame we blame we blame what am i doing about it how active am i so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of preparing accordingly and 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 realizing that our life is short we need to prepare for akhirat and we cannot co 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 allow anything to compromise and jeopardize us amal fatul ayy jubatul alim wal abid fa yuqalu lil abid a alim a scholar of deen and abid will be resurrected the abid will be told go into your jannah but what will be told to an alim qif hatta tashfa lin nas you wait you need to intercede on on others behalf you need to take people with you into jannah so let us uh, try to see how we can study deen and then be resurrected amongst the ulama or with the ulama at least wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin